Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our A10C and we're looking at using GBUs, in particular laser guided bombs. These laser guided bombs are essentially just standard bombs. We've got Mark 82 500 pounders and Mark 84 2000 pounders with LGB guidance kits attached to them that convert them into the GBU 10 and the GBU-12, and that's what we're going to be using today. These bombs don't fire their own tracking laser. Instead, they are completely passive. They have a passive sensor on the nose that detects a designating laser. Now, that designating laser can be fired from, well, pretty much anything. It can be fired from a targeting bot attached to our aircraft, which is what we're going to do today. It could be from a buddy aircraft, another A-10C or a Harrier or a Hornet or whatever, that has a targeting pod attached to it. Or it could be from a JTAC equipped ground vehicle that's doing a laser des designation. When we drop the bomb, it will first drop ballistically through a normal bomb path. And then at a certain point, it will hit the tracking phase, at which point the guidance kit will take over and guide it to the designated laser point. So let's have a look at the armament screen. We can carry these bombs on all pylons apart from 1 and 11. And uh, why don't we equip pylon 5 here. Bombs, we've got whoops, the GBU-10, that is the Mark 84 with the guidance kit, and the GBU-12 and Mark 82 with the guidance kit. And why don't we take the big ones just for fun. And because we're going to be doing our own lasing today, we're going to take a targeting pod as well. And that's how it's done. Request refueling. So Copy. while we're waiting for that, let's have a look at the controls we're going to be using today. To drop the bomb, we're going to press and hold weapon release. To generate our target speed, our target point on the terrain, we're going to press TMS sh forward short to lock the ground terrain. And then TMS forward long to create the speed. To select our weapon or weapon profile, we're going to have DMS left and or DMS right. To change our master mode, we're going to have the master mode control there. To fire our laser manually, which we're not going to do today, but if we were, we've got that there. To select our various sensors of interest, which we will want to do, we'll want to press coolie switch right long to select the TGP and to reselect the HUD later on, we're going to want coolie switch up short. And that should do us for today. Okay, our paveways are equipped. The next thing we're going to do is setting up. So Dro dropping these bombs is actually really easy and really good fun, but we have to do a fair amount of setup, especially if we want to get into the fiddly bit. So we're going to get that done on the ground here just to make it easier for me. As for our a AHCP panel, we want our master arm on. We're going to have our laser arm on because we're going to be using the laser and our TGP on because we're going to be designating a speed and lasing from our TGP. First thing we need to do, as ever, is populate our DSMS, our digital stores management system. So to do that, we're going to press and hold stat. We're going to click load. We're going to click stat. We're going to click load. We're going to click load all. Wait until these guys are populated. Time skipped and we have populated our DSMS. Now we can click DSMS and we have our updated loadout. We've got a GBU-10 there with a laser code of 1688 and one of them on that, on that pylon and the same on here. Now note the laser code. We have to ensure that our laser code on these bombs matches the laser that we're going to be designating from our targeting pod here. And we're going to change that just to show you that we can change that. We also have to ensure that we are using a unique code and that no one else in the combat theater is using our code. Otherwise our bomb may track someone else's laser by accident and uh, blow up uh, someone's house or something by accident. So let's get to work on that. First we're going to look at the weapon profile. By loading these two guys it would have created a weapon profile automatically. We go to a weapon profile screen. We'll see it's called GBU-10. Scroll down to GBU-10. Click view profile. So we've got lots of stuff we can start setting up. Our release type. So we can release it in a single where one press of the release button will drop one bomb or pairs where one press will drop two bombs or Ripple single, where we can drop one after the other by pressing and holding the button. I don't know why you'd ever want to do that with a GBU, because the whole idea of these is to, you know, ensure that we get maximum accuracy, not, not a ripple, but it's there and available. Or ripple pairs, where we're dropping two at a time over a ripple. And we're not going to go into the ripples, because we just don't really need to. In fact, why don't we? Um, with the ripples, we get ripple quantity. How many that we want in the ripple, we can change that from the UFC here. And the designated spacing between each bomb impact. We're going to go for single. Our fusing, do we want nose tail, nose fuse only, tail fuse only? We're going to go for nose tail. Mode of release, do we want CCIP, con uh, constantly calculated impact point, or CCRP, constantly cal calculated release point? We'll always want CCRP for dropping a GBU. Technically, you can do it from a CCIP, I think, but it's, it's it defeats the point of having the uh, a GBU, so always CCRP. 
Next, let's go and have a look at the settings we can change. Change settings. A whole bunch of them with a laser guided GBU. First of all, our escape maneuver. When we escape, are we going to climb? Are we going to turn? Are we going to... Oh, God, I think that's a lateral turn. It may have to remind me of that. Or none. It's always going to be on climb as far as I'm aware. Desired time of fall. How many seconds do we want this bomb to drop for? If we wanted it to drop for 10 seconds for some reason, I don't know why you would, but you could, then it would give you guidance cues here on the HUD to ensure we do that. Minimum altitude of drop uh, if we wanted um, 1,000 feet. In fact, we'd probably best show one of these off. If we wanted a minimum drop of 1,000 feet. One, zero, zero, zero on the UFC and click it. If for some reason it's buggy and it's not letting you do that, just press clear first, wherever it is, there, and then it will start working. Uh, laser time, this is an important one. Um, how, if you want the laser to shoot automatically, and we do, because the last thing we want is another thing to have to think about, we don't want to laser manually, um, then how many seconds before impact do we want the laser to start shining? Well, uh, the it says in the manual the optimal is 8 seconds, so we're going to go with 8 seconds. 8. Laser time of 8. Um, our drop profile, do we want it optimal drop profile or ballistic drop profile? I've not actually experimented with these, so I can't really tell you which is the most efficient, but that is an option there. Do you want auto lasing on or off? I do want it on. If we if we had it off, we would have to laze ourselves by pressing the nose wheel steering button, and that's difficult. We don't want to do that. We want to leave it on at all times. Um, offset in mill of a uh, longitudinal offset here or lateral offset and vertical offset here i've never understood why you'd want to do those but they are there if you want them the eject speed of the pod i don't know why you'd want to change that but it's possible there and the bomb rack delay i never understood what that means to be honest so i always leave that at zero so that's everything changed and we've got a full list of our bomb settings here but alas the laser code is 1688 and i want to change that for this tutorial can't change it in here in a profile don't know why but you just can't so first thing is because we've made changes always remember to save the profile it's now saved we've got that updated and saved stat back to the main uh, dsms next we want to change our laser code so inventory and i'm going to click one of these guys and i'm going to tell the inventory what it is it's a gbu it's a gbu 10 uh, we've got change various stuff here. All I'm interested in is the laser code. I'm going to type in the laser code 1588. That's just the one I've chosen. Now, you can't type any number in. They have to be within a certain range of numbers. And I don't know what those numbers are. I just know a few that work. So just bear in mind, you can't type anything in you want in. Uh, I'm going to load that to both my stations left and right. So I'm going to load symmetrical. And that is our bombs updated. Just back to the main DSMS page. We can see our GBU-10s are now laser code 1588. Ground safe on. That's everything there done. Our AHCP is done. Next, we need to set up our targeting pod. But we'll do that in the EAF to make that more realistic. So next, we're going to get airborne, find some bad guys, start setting up our targeting pod. And we'll take it from there. Okay, we've just taken off. And almost immediately, I found some bad guys off the nose. Our usual set of bad guys there. So the first thing is we need to set a target point on the train, a speed, sensor point of interest for these bombs to track and fall to. So we can do that in several ways, but we're going to use the targeting pod because it's just my preferred way of doing it. Um, I'll just lock these guys up with a speed here just while I'm down low to just make it quick and easy. So we're going to select our targeting pod, click air to ground, we're going to make it center of interest with coolie right long. We've now got center of interest, let me just go lock these guys up ever so quickly now obviously you wouldn't do it like this in a real theater but just for ease i'm going to move our tgp over the target dms up short to lock on the terrain and we'll just leave it there now i'm going to get to a realistic altitude regards altitude of these bombs optimal 15,000 feet agl so up we go and while we're climbing for altitude um we can adjust the position we can slew exactly where this uh, targeting point targeting pod is targeting and i forgot to show you that earlier so we're going to go to axis. It's these chaps here, the um, Hotel Slew horizontal and vertical. And we can use that to change where our, our targeting pod is pointing on the terrain exactly and configure. Just for this, uh, it's not a targeting pod video, so I'm just going to simply track the terrain below that guy there. That'll do. Just while we're gaining altitude, something to remember. Our laser designated laser does have a maximum range of about 10 miles on the slant range. Here is our slant range, 3.5 four miles at the moment now this isn't really going to affect us if we're designating ourselves but if we're buddy lasing for someone else 
We've got to be sure that we're not out of 10 miles. And just to keep it safe, I'd say stay within 8 miles. Just to ensure that you never go out of range with a laser. It's a real surefire way to ruin a mission. I've done it plenty of times without realising. Another thing to mention is that we've got to keep a line of sight from our targeting pod to the targets. If at any point a part of our wing or something gets in the way, let me try and do that. Hmm. Yeah, see like that? And it's surprisingly easy to do. That will cut the laser so the laser no longer shines. And if that happens when the laser is shining, then obviously the bomb will stop guiding and it will ruin the mission again. And I've done that plenty of times. As we're slowly climbing, why don't we have a look at our setting up our T-Pod now. Um, so we're currently on air to ground, as we saw earlier. We're going to go to CNTL here, where we get more options. Now, this isn't a targeted pod video, so we're not going to go through it all. But there are things that we do want. For instance, the laser code of the TED designating laser has to match that of our bomb so this guy here 1688 for the laser needs to be changed so we're going to change that now with one hand i'm going to one five eight eight and it's that guy there so that is our designating laser set to one five eight eight uh other things of interest latch on or off might be interest here so latch off means that if we were manually lasing pressing the nose of the steering button we would need to press and hold it for the laser to remain on once we release that button then the laser would then be off and that's a difficult thing to do to hold that button on while you know dodging enemy fire or whatever else you've got to be doing so you could click latch and that turns it into a toggle therefore you just click the laser button um the, sorry the nose steering button and it will go on and then click the button again and it will go off so it's something to bear in mind we want to make sure that we are in laser mode l here means we're in laser mode if we weren't for some reason uh, DMS Delta right will toggle between modes so I can go laser P B and back to laser so that's how you do that that's all I can think of interest at the moment in there so I'm going to go return to main AG menu we're up at altitude now so the next thing we need to do that I forgot to do earlier is create our speed so we're going to create it from that targeting pod uh, we've got our point our track point there so what we're going to do is TMS up long to create the speed and the speed is now created. We know because we've got a target speed here telling us that the speed is to the left by 70 degrees, 3.1 miles. Uh, but also, I like to do a tad check. It's just my little thing. And you can see we've got a wedding cake speed sign on the tad here just to double check we've got our speed and it's roughly in the right place. So our speed is created. We can now do bombing. Um, next, we want to select our weapon we're going to press master mode until we get to ccrp and we don't actually have to do this it's just try i'm trying to promote good practice next we have to select our weapon dms left and right so we're going to dms uh, woo, right uh, to do that we have to ensure that our hud is soy that it's our center of interest currently this is soy so we're going to go coolie up uh coolie forward short it's now soy we've got that little mark to prove it is and we're going to we're going to dms left or right left and you can see it's selected the gbu the one profile that we've set up that we've got we've got symbology here for drop but we'll go through it when we're on our final drop i'm gonna have to start talking faster now so what we're gonna do is head out a distance um i'll say a, uh, five or six miles and you can see the miles that we are from the target so technically a slant range but it'll do we'll get to five or six miles then we'll turn back in and then we'll go on our bomb run while well, we've got a few minutes um cursory checks check our laser codes are good here check the laser code is good here and it is check everything's set up check uh, single nose tail CCRP master arm laser arm TGP arm everything's done our distance is now six miles so we're going to turn in to find the target we use this navigation aid here for the speed it's telling us to turn left 140 degrees 6.1 miles you can see our wing or part of our body is obstructing the laser view here that's something we have to ensure that we do not do one of the ways to help alleviate that is to be at high altitude 15,000 feet appears seems to be optimal 60 degrees to go We've now got our bomb full line coming from the CCRP reticle here. You can see it's this chap here. And here comes our ASL line, our azimuth guidance line here. So, um, let's just pause and we'll start talking about the symbology. So, we've got our diamond there. That is our speed ready for bombing there. We've got our ASL line here and we've got our CCRP reticle here and our bomb full line here. The, what we want to do is get everything lined up. Particularly this dot in the middle of our CCRP uh, reticle on that ASL line and that ASL line on this chap here, the speed. We get them all lined up. That's all we have to do in terms of azimuth steering. In terms of vertical movement, well, we want to keep roughly level. We can have a small incline or decline. It doesn't really matter, but we'll keep this uh, path vector here roughly on the horizon and that's fine. 
Uh, we have to release LGBs in three of nine uh, mode, but that's fine. We've got the predicted bomb fall here of currently 34 seconds. We've got our weapon selected here. We've got our drop queue here. Now, what's going to happen is we're going to get a countdown. Uh, I think we're too far out for a countdown at the moment. But we're going to count down, which will be a number on the right here. And it will count down. And when it gets down to six, this chap here is going to start dropping down. And when it hits this chap here, then the bomb will drop. When it hits six, we also want to press and hold the weapon release button. And do not release that button until we are sure that the bomb has dropped from our DSMS page. It's a common mistake to release too early and you've wasted all your time. And you just get frustrated. So that's that. That's all I can think to say about that. So let's get going. Because we're up high, we're not really going to get to see the um, the target. In fact, we've climbed a bit too high, but, well, there's no such thing as too high, really. Right, we can see our countdown at the top there on the on the drop queues, 15 seconds. So my only job now is just to keep all these things in line and press and hold the drop button. And there it is. Press and hold. And wait until it's dropped. And there she goes. Right, going to bung myself an autopilot. And then we're going to watch that bomb. What a pilot, where are you, sir? So it's currently so it's currently in ballistic phase. When it hits the uh, track phase, you'll see it will suddenly tilt over when it's uh, decided to find the laser and then tracking the laser. If it does it at all. Oh, hey, there it is. I was worried there. Usually you'd be in the cockpit and checking that you're not obstructing the laser view, but we're not going to do it. Kaboomy! And that was jolly good fun, wasn't it? Right, uh, and because we've got another bomb and it's bloody good fun, I'm now going to designate... Oops, I'm now going to designate a new target. So coolly right long to select our, our um, chap over here. Select a new target. That'll do. Got such splash damage on this thing, it doesn't even matter if we're not perfectly aimed. Designated new speed with TMS up long, forward long, sorry, that's our new speed. And we're going to wait until we're five miles and turn in again. It's pretty much now, autopilot off. Five miles, let's go in again. Although they're bloody good and bloody accurate, I don't suppose they'll ever compete with the JDAMs because the JDAMs, you don't need the added complexity and stress of the laser. Whoops, sorry, now I'm just talking, aren't I? Right, concentrate, cat. So I guess the JDAMs are always going to have the upper foot. I don't know where. LGBs would ever have the upper foot over the JDAMs. Let me know if you know, but it's just my thinking. Right, I need to concentrate for a second. 11 seconds, 10 seconds, 9 seconds. We're a bit off here, so... I don't know if that's actually going to work. We'll try it, I guess. See what happens. Pion. What about it on? Covered in ballistic phase. Where's my A-10? There I am. Hello. Oh, is it tracking? Is it tracking? Yes, it is. Out of interest, does anyone know if it's the front fins or the back fins that uh, actually guide it? From my reading, it's only the front fins that are movable, but um, let me know if you know different. Oh, I missed! <laughs> oh dear, how embarrassing. Oh, whoops. Uh, it turns out I actually targeted some um, distance away from the target. Uh, two options, two possibilities. Once, one, I accidentally nudged the designated control and moved it off of the target before I created the speed. Or much more likely, it's uh, kind of weird because I'm using area tracking, so I'm tracking the terrain and not the actual target. It's possible I was actually tracking some um, what looked like a target, but I was actually tracking the terrain behind it. If I wanted to ensure that I was tracking the target, I'd have to go on point mode, and but that's for another tutorial. It's just something to be aware of, so uh, that's there. But it just shows that the bomb will go exactly wherever I am tracking on the terrain. And that's another good reason why you should always, when you're heading into the target on your bomb, bomb run, always double check the screen here to check that it is locked onto the, the area of target that you wanted. That's something I usually do because it was in such a hurry. I forgot so always when you're on your final bomb run double check that this isn't in an, in an area that's deceived you you're not tracking a bit of land or something behind the target uh, and then that wouldn't have happened obviously right uh, that's all i can think to say about laser guided bombs hope that helps see you later